So last year, ZTE released the world's first under display camera with the Axon 25G. And although the tech was super cool, it wasn't exactly flawless in its execution. You could very easily see the pixels of the display that covered the camera area. So it wasn't much less distracting than a standard hole punch camera. This year, however, things are starting to get interesting. This is ZTE's Axon 30, and it comes with the second generation of under display camera tech. If I handed this phone to a random person, there's a good chance that they would not find the front facing camera until they inspected it up close. It's that good. The first time I picked this phone up, it kind of shocked me a bit, not gonna lie. It's a little creepy to not be able to see a camera that can definitely still see you. Looking at the Axon 30 from a normal distance, the front facing camera is about 99% invisible. If you know exactly where to look and if you focus on it for a second, sure, you can find it. But if you're just using your phone normally or watching a video, it's gone. There's nothing there. According to ZTE, this massive improvement is due to a couple of different things. First, they've doubled the pixel density on the panel covering the camera. Last year it was 200 ppi, this year it's 400 ppi. It also now uses an independent UDC Pro chip to drive the display to make sure that the section covering the panel is perfectly synced with the rest of the display. The only time you can really see where that camera is hidden is when you shine a bright light at it and you're looking at it off axis and up close. It's hard to describe, it just looks like a tiny little rectangle that looks slightly off from the rest of the display that surrounds it. You can't even see the pixels with the naked eye like you could with the previous phone. It's just a tiny, slightly darker rectangle. But like I said, most of the time it's completely invisible. It reminds me of the front of a OnePlus 7 Pro with no curved edges and only a slightly bigger chin, which is extremely high praise coming from me because I love that phone. I have a feeling we're gonna see a lot more devices with this kind of under display camera tech in the near future. Samsung already has an under display camera inside the main screen of the Z Fold 3. Before that happens though, there are some inherent problems that are gonna need to be solved. Naturally, making a camera shoot through multiple layers of display material is not easy and the current results coming from the front facing camera certainly aren't perfect by any means. It seems better than last year, but it still isn't anywhere near the level of quality that you can get from a camera that just has a notch or a hole punch. The software does some post-processing to add sharpness and contrast, but it still kind of looks like a photo that a camera would take if you've got your greasy fingers all over the camera lens. The camera has a 16 megapixel sensor, so it's not that the camera lacks resolution, it's just difficult for it to shoot through seven different layers of material and still produce a decent image. I asked you guys on my community page if you'd rather an invisible camera with a poor image quality or a hole punch camera with good image quality, and about one fifth of you said you'd take the invisible camera. I'm kinda torn about this. Personally, I almost never take photos with the front facing camera, so I'd almost take this over something with a hole punch or a notch. But at the same time, there are those very occasional times where I need the front facing camera and it's always good to have a nice one. Plus, I don't really find the hole punch in modern phones very distracting. I don't notice it at all when I'm using my phone normally and it's only slightly irritating when I'm watching a video. Aside from that cool under display camera tech, the Axon 30 also has a 120 hz full HD AMOLED display and a touch sampling rate of 360 hz so this phone is extremely smooth and responsive to use. There's an in-display fingerprint reader at the bottom and the display covers 100% of the P3 color gamut so it's color accurate. This display is fantastic for a phone that costs about half as much as modern flagships and we'll talk about pricing in a sec. The bezels aren't quite as slim as some of those flagships, but given that they're pushing the envelope with that under display camera tech, I think we can probably give them a break on that one. As for the rest of the Axon 30, it's interesting. I definitely prefer the look of the Axon 20 a lot more. Honestly, these two phones don't even look like they were made by the same company. The way the cameras are arranged inside the bump looks very strange to me, and I'm not big on the way this Axon branding runs up and down the side. For internal specs, you get a Snapdragon 870, which is slightly faster than the 865 plus, 8 gigabytes of RAM, 128 gigabytes of storage, a 4200 milliamp hour battery, and a 65 watt wired fast charger that comes in the box. That's a solid spec sheet, especially since this phone costs 500 US dollars. For that price, you also get a case and a USB-C to 3.5 millimeter headphone jack in the box, Plus the phone has a slot for a micro SD card. Seems like a pretty good value, honestly, as long as great camera quality isn't something you care a whole lot about. I think as this tech matures, we'll be able to hide the camera behind the display without such a huge reduction in image quality. And at that point, that's where a lot of people are gonna be jumping on board with this idea. Right now though, it's kind of a gimmick, but I hope they continue improving it. Hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching. And as always, have a great day.